Today I want to talk about Sefer Yonah that we are reading in Yom Kippur and Aftara for Mincha. And I'm pretty sure that everyone is familiar with the story, okay, that Yonah basically tried to run away and escape from giving Nevuhah to Nineveh. That 40 days going, in 40 days, Nineveh Nehefechet, destroyed. He don't want to give this nevuah because he realized that the people in Nineveh are going to do tshuva quickly, and after they do tshuva quickly, HaKadosh Baruch is going to regret and not punish them. He thinks that it's not good, it's not honest, it's not nice, and he tried to run away. And after it's happened, everyone knows that Yonah has like a conversation, argument with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu killed his tree, as everyone familiar with, and <coughs> I'm pretty sure that everyone knows with the end of the story that in the end of the Sefer Yonah we found the answer, the final answer that the Kodesh Baruch Hu gave to Yonah why he did what Yonah complained about and what's the logic behind his behavior, the Kodesh Baruch Hu, and what's the logic about his leading the world in this way. Okay? And that's a punchline of Sefer Yonah. So what I want to start with, I don't want to start with from the beginning, I want to go straight to the punchline to the last paragraph in Sefer Yonah, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in the end, gave Yonah answer to all his complaints and explained Yonah why he did what he did. So let's look together in the end of Sefer Yonah, the punchline of the book. So it's the end of Sefer Yonah, Perik Dalet. Basically, I want to read Pasuk Yudalev, but before I start to read Pasuk Yudalev, just a little bit back onto the answer. Has everyone remember the story with the Kikayon? Kikayon, the tree that was one day created, and then when you now get a little bit shed, sell from the tree, then Akadosh Bochu dried the tree, and you now get really upset from this. And Akadosh Bochu told him, Why are you so upset? He didn't do anything to plant and to walk and to put effort on making this tree. It's coming one day and gone one day and you are so upset. So that's a marshal for the punchline. What is a punchline? Look at Pasuk Yudalif. So if you are so upset about the Kikayon that dried, that you didn't do anything to create him, how you expected me not to have mercy about my creation, but now listen carefully. That in this city there is more than like 12,000, a lot of people in these generations. Okay? Now listen carefully. If that's all the end of the Pasuk, I can understand everything. You know why? Because the Kaddish basically told you now, you know, Everyone have rachamim, mercy, about something that you love, like, want. You have rachamim about the tree that you didn't do anything, nothing, to create. What do you expect from me, not to have mercy about my creations? That's I can understand. But then HaKadosh Baruch Hu add few words. And let me be a little bit cynical and read this word with a little bit of sarcasm. But it, it, it's, it's almost the only way to read them. There is more than 12, a lot of people. What does it mean, don't know to make the difference between the left side and the right side. It's mean, why a Kodesh Baruch need to forgive Ninveh? Because in Ninveh you have a, a lot of people, but all of them are basically dumbs. I mean, real stupid. They don't know to make a difference between the left side and the right side. When I, when I was a child, it was a legend story in Eretz Israel that these Turkish soldiers, okay, before the First World War, that was in Eretz Israel, didn't know the difference between the left and right. So to get them used to, they put tomato and potato, one in one hand and the other in the other hand, and they told them, Tomato, potato, to remember the side. It's mean, HaKadosh Baruch Hu need to forgive Ninveh. Why? Because Ninveh has a lot of people, 
and not as you can think, because there is a lot of universities in their research, prize Nobel winners, you know, uh, people that giving future to the world, you know, with their vision, with their creation. No, because Nineveh is full of stupid, dumb people that don't even know how to make the difference between left side and right side. One. But that's not enough. What else you have a lot in Nineveh? Hube Maraba. And also a lot of animals. Let's think about it. Why Kodesh Baruch need to forgive Nineveh? Because in Nineveh you have a lot of dogs. And Akadosh Baruch loved dogs. Basically, he joined the Greenpeace. No, seriously, that's a punchline. The punchline of the answers. I need to forgive Nineveh because the people in Nineveh are stupid and there is a lot of animals in Nineveh. And that's a punchline of Yom Kippur. Mincha. The highlight of Yom Kippur, Maftir. What's the conclusion? He won't forgiveness from Akadosh Baruch be stupid and have dog. Obviously it's ridiculous. What's the message here? What's exactly the idea behind this? So now I want to continue being a little bit sarcastic with all of Bakashat Aslicha. And let's talk a little bit for how can we prove that the people in Inver really were stupid? I want to prove it to you. And obviously I want to have another question, but let's prove it to you. Look at Mary Gimel for a second. Pergim are talking about the place that you now already came to Nineveh and told them the Nevuah that in 40 days Nineveh Ne'efechet. Okay? Because we're going to destroy Nineveh in 40 days. And listen to this. What the people in Nineveh did? Vayaminu anshein Nineveh ba'elokim pasuk hei pergim Vayikreu tzom ve'ilbeshu sakim migodlam ve'ad kotnam so the people on the street, the regular people, the Balabatim, when they heard what Yonah said when he walked in the street and announcing that in 40 days Nineveh destroyed, they believe on what he said by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and what they did, they decided to do Tzom, fast, and dresses with... Sackcloth. What? Sackcloth. Sackcloth. Okay? Excellent. Sakin. And then look at the next pasuk. Vayiga davar el Melech Ninveh. Melech Ninveh heard about what's happening in the street. Vayako mikiso. Vayavera darto me'ala vayicha sak vayeshev ala efer. So you heard what's happened? He did the same thing. He wear sakin. And instead of sitting on his chair, he's sitting on the efer. Let's say on the floor. Okay? And then. Look at Pasuk Zayn. Vayazek vayomer ben inve mitam ha-melech u-gdolav le-emor. Then come in the punchline. Listen to this. The king invited all his advisors, you know, the big people in Inve, all the ministers, advisors, all the important people. And they sit in together to come to conclusion what to do. How do I know this? Because the Pasuk starts with the world. Vayomer ben Inveh, it's announcement to the nation, like the president in the state giving an announcement to the nation from time to time. So it's an announcement to the nation. From whom? From the king and Gdolav. What does it mean Gdolav? All his ministers, advisors, all the big important people in Inveh. What is the announcement? What's their conclusion how to deal with the situation? Look at this. Lemo, ha'adam ve ha'beema, abakar ve atzon al itamu meuma, al iru mai malishtu. So first thing, they announced that no one allowed to eat or to drink fast. By the way, this we already heard that the people did by themselves. What's the additional thing that the melech and all his advisor add here? Not just the people, also the animals. Great. Okay, so if you have dog, remember, don't let him eat any food for a few days. Okay? Wow, really clever. 
because I understand why human beings need to fast, but animal? But that's not enough. There is a second paragraph in the announcement. More stark. Listen to this. Veit kasu sakim. Everyone need to dress with sakim. Hadam. That's already did before. By the nation themselves. Vea beema. Oh, great. You know all the old lady that have a puppy like dog, small dog that give them a sweater. And that's it. So change it to sakim. Vea beema. Wow, amazing. We need the king and all his big, clever advisor to come to this brilliant conclusion. Not just people not need to eat, also the animals, and not just people need to cover with sakim, also the animals. Wonderful. I agree that the people in Inve don't know the difference between left and right. That's approved, no? But after all this sarcasm, the question is, what's the point here? You know? What's the idea? I don't understand anything, you know? Why it's so significant? The animals need to not eat, the animals need to cover by sack. This is their king and the clever people. What, what's exactly the Navi want to tell us? What's the message here? I'm not believing that the Navi give us details, it's just stupidity, you know? What's the idea behind this? That's my second question. So first question, I don't understand the punchline about the Kadosh Baruch who gave mercy to Nineveh and saved them because of the people that don't know the difference between left and right and the animals. And here we find such ridiculous things that you need to cover the animals with sakim and not to let them eat. What's happened with the animals in this book? Okay. Third thing is I want to go to the beginning of the book. Everyone familiar with this story? You and I don't want to listen to a Kadosh Baruch to give Nivua to Nineveh because they think that it's ridiculous what he did. He decided to run away. So, first of all, everyone asking the same question. What's really in that thought when he decided to run away? Does he really knew what's going to be happen? Or not? It's mean, does he really believe that he can run away from HaKadosh Baruch to Chutz Laaretz and then escape from the necessary to give the Nebuah? Because you know that Chazal say that you're not getting Nebuah in Chutz Laaretz. So he decided to run away to Chutz Laaretz to trick HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And then the Kaddish Baruch not able to give him Nevoah because he's in Chutz Laaretz. With all the respect, you know, in the kindergarten, every child knows that the Kaddish Baruch can do everything. He can avoid you to go to, to Chutz Laaretz. You're not able to trick in the Kaddish Baruch so cheap and, and run away to Chutz Laaretz to escape the Nevoah. And you now was a Navi, so as you can imagine, Navi is supposed to be high level of knowledge, midot, closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. what really he thought? He thought that he can run away from HaKadosh Baruch Hu? I'm pretty sure that the answer is no. Because he wasn't surprised when the storm started in the middle of the ocean. How do I know that he wasn't surprised? Because what's happening when the storm starts? What's all everyone did? Do you familiar with this story? Look with me. In Perek. In Perik Aleph Pasukei, Vairu Amalachim, Vayizaku Ishele Lokav. That's after the storm start. Vayatilu et Akelim Asher Baoniyah El Yam Leakel Maalehem, Veyonai Yaradel Yarketei Asfina, Vayishka Vayiradem. Okay, and now coming one of the beautiful Sfaradi Slichot. Vayikra Velavra Vachovel Vayomer Malechan Nirdam. Kum kail elokecha, etc. What's your did? He went to sleep. And everyone understands that it's ridiculous, you know? Everyone understands that it's ridiculous to go to sleep, but it just proved to me that you now understand what's going on. And you now maybe knew even that the Kodesh Boch had not allowed him to escape and run away from giving the Nevoah. And when the stone start, you now react. With an unrational way, he didn't pray to Hakadosh Baruch like everyone else. He didn't try to save himself. He went to sleep. It's like a child, you know, when he have nightmare, he covers and he thinks that someone coming to his house. He, he covers himself with a blanket, do like this, and think that maybe it's going to help him. 
It's a childish behavior. The only explanation to this childish behavior is what? To believe that you're not playing it from the beginning. He knew that the Baruch not let him go. And he don't care. So what's exactly he wanted? These are the three questions that I want to discuss about Sefer Yana. The new Yana behavior in the beginning of the book, the idea about Nineveh, Tshuva, that included the animals, something ridiculous in our opinion, and the conclusion of the book, the punchline. To answer these three questions, and maybe to understand one of the messages of Sefer Yona, I want to learn with you a paragraph in the Sfatimet. So everyone get the Sfatimet, if not, there is more there. As you know, the Sfatimet was the second Ger Rabbi. Okay? Bagmara. Gdolat Shuvashes Donot Nesot Kizchuyot, etc. Kishgagot, Kan Meava Kan Mira. Basically, the Sfatim had dealing with the Gemara that discussed contradiction that we found. We found contradiction between two paragraphs from the Tanai. One paragraph, when it's talking about the power of the Tshuva, say that the Tshuva has a power to take this Donot, what is Donot? Thing that you do by purpose, and to make them as it was Shkagot. What is Shkagot? Things that you do in on purpose. Okay? So the power of tshuva is that it could take this donot to make them to be like shagagot. That's one paragraph in the Tanai. Other paragraph said, Dolat tshuva shofechet zdonot lizchuyot. The power of tshuva is so big that it could take your zdonot to make them to consider as you do mitzvot as really it's zchuyot for you. Not just that the Kodesh Baruch Hu consider them as a shogeg, that it's not your fault, the Kodesh Baruch Hu take your averot and make them to be like, you did mitzvot, zchuyot. So the Gemara asking, it's a contradiction, what's the power of tshuva? Does the power of tshuva is to, to change the zdono to be zchuyot or to be shgagot? And the Gemara basically answer, kan b'shav me'ava, kan b'shav me'ira. It depends which type of tshuva you do. If you do tshuva of ir'ah, fear from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and that's the logic and the reason for your tshuva, then this do not became to be shugagot. If you do tshuva because of your love to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if you seek and searching to be close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, this do not became to be like zchuyot. So what I meant in this part, I've come to explain the logic behind this. What's the idea behind this Gemara? And you look next to the number 18 in your source sheet. The small 18 in the middle of the Sfatimet. He said like this. Hu mistama akol emet. Lefi ha-shavim. De lefamim mitorer ha-adam b'tshuva al-yedei ha-yira. Me'otsem kilkulim shenaasa al-yedei ha-chataim. Hu mitcharet me'od al maase ha-chet. Hu kmochen nechlash lemala ha-pgam shenaasa me'achet. וזה נושא עוון שהחטא נעשה קל כשגגות. ולפעמים מתעורר האדם בתשובה על ידי אהבה, שמתפעל איך בכוח אדם במעשים טובים לעשות נחת רוח למעלה, ועל ידי זה מתחרט על החטא, שעל ידי זה אין כוחו להידבק בתורת השם ובמצוותיו. ואז הזכויות והמעשים טובים שעשה עד עתה, כמו שהם חשובים בעילם ומתפעל בהם, כך הם מתעלים למעלה. I, I stop here and just explain what I read. Swatman so basically explained that the, the source of the tshuva, if it's coming from fear or coming from love to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, coming from two different perspectives, the person look about himself and motivated him to do tshuva. There is people that what motivated them to do tshuva because they are afraid. What mean they are afraid? They look about themselves, what they did over the year, they realize that they did so many things that HaKadosh Baruch not allow them to do. They know that they come into Beidin Shalmala, Yom Adin, and they're afraid, literally afraid. Because they know that in this day, HaKadosh Baruch in these days, HaKadosh Baruch Hu decide, Mi Lechaim, Vemi Lemavet, Mi Bamay, Mi Baesh, Mi Bachaya. They know everything. And they know how much it's 
terrifying their situation. And they so regret because of the fear that they want HaKadosh Baruch to forgive them and to forget what they did wrong. They don't want to get any punishment about their mistakes. That, number one. But there is people that what's motivated him, motivated them to do tshuva is different, different power, different, different source. It's because they feel the loneliness that in their world there is no existence of a Kodesh Baruch. They feel that they get meaningless to their life. They feel how the chataim over the year make them to be in such a bad position in their relationship to HaKadosh Baruch They feel them that they're losing their meaningless to their life. They're feeling that they're losing their connection to HaKadosh Baruch That's it. And they really upset about the idea that they're losing the Ruchaniyut, the Kedusha, the meaning to their life. And that's Shuvah Me'ava. And the Rasfat Emet gave us unbelievable idea. And he summarized it in few words. Next to the number 19. Ki kol anaga lemala, shelemala, talui birtson ha'adam lemata. He says something unbelievable. He said, you know what? When Yom Kippur is coming, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave everyone exactly what he asked. If you want to do tshuva because you're afraid from the din, because you're afraid that maybe HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to punish you, so what is your problem? That you're afraid from the punishment. HaKadosh Baruch Hu come and tell you, you know what, I love you. I gave you what you ask. What you ask, not to be punished? So all your mistakes consider as shagagot. This person is supposed to be punished about shagag? No? So don't worry about this. I take in all your zdonot and make them as shogeg. There is a response of HaKadosh Baruch Hu to what you request. Because what you request? That you don't want to get punished. You are shav meirah. You are doing tshuva because of your fear from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, from the punishment. HaKadosh Baruch Hu love you and telling you. I will give, to give you exactly what you ask. What you ask? Not to get punished? You're not going to get punished. You know why? Because all yours are not going to be shagagot. You don't need to worry about this. But person that shav me ahava, what he's searching, what he's looking for, he's not looking for not to get punished. He's looking for closer relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He's looking for searching for Kedusha in his life. He's searching for presentance of HaKadosh Baruch Hu in his life. How we get the presence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu in our life? How we get the connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu? By doing the mitzvot. The mitzvot giving Kedusha, giving the closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in our life. So what would he regret? He regret that instead of the Averot, he was need to do mitzvot. Instead of destroying the, the roots that connect them to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he didn't build them stronger over the year. So what would he regret? He regret that he spent his time by doing Yavirot and not by doing more to build his connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Mitzvot. HaKadosh Baruch Hu loved him and gave him exactly what he asked. What does he ask? He upset that he didn't do enough mitzvot this year. He didn't do enough to build a relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu took this donot and made them to be like zchuyot. Because that's the key svata, say this what meant. כל הנהגה שלמעלה תלוי ברצון האדם למטה. That's it. That's a key of the tshuva process in Yom HaKippurim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu telling his kids, I love you, I'm here to give you everything that you ask. But you know what? Just what you ask. Nothing more than what you ask. Everything that you ask, but nothing more. It's like an open check. You can write the amount. What you write, what you write in the amount, that's what you get. But after you write the amount, you're not able to say, oh, but it's somebody you want more. That's what you ask. And that's the secret of Yom Kippur. And that's exactly what the Gemara tried to say. It depends on you what you get. If this do not become to be zchuyot, or this do not become to be shkagot, it depends on what's really 
honestly you want from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You want not to get punished? Shagagot. You want to build your relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You want more to shine your life? Zuchuyot. You're not able to fake and deny to HaKadosh Baruch Hu because Bochen Kalayot Valev. What you have inside, what you really want? That's a question. I think that's exactly the secret behind Sefer Yonah. And let me explain why. Yonah was really upset. You know why he was really upset? Because Yonah understands that in the situation that is coming to Nineveh and telling the people in Nineveh, you have 40 days to save yourself. In 40 days, everything going to destroy. Everyone going to do tshuva. You know, when the gun is next to your head and you need to decide to do tshuva or to get killed and lose everything, it's not really tshuva. It's, we can call it more the existent instinct. There is a phrase like this in English. Survival instinct. Survival instinct. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. You know why? You know why? Because even an animal not jump to the fire. Why does animal have sechel? No, it's a survival instinct. That's exactly what you're not complaining. You're not come to Hashem Baruch and say, you know, I can believe in tshuva. I, I can understand the process of tshuva, but it must to be based on something realistic, something that's coming from your sechel, your mind, something coming from your soul, something that have walk about your midot, about your personality involved with this. If you send me to Nineveh and tell me to go to Nineveh and to tell them what? You have 40 days. If not, Nineveh nefechet. The idea that in Shein Nineveh going to do tshuva is nothing. It's something that even animal can do. You know why even animal can do? Because it's survival instinct. Even your dog not jumping straight to the fire. And maybe that's the reason why when Yuna wrote his book and he tried to describe the tshuva in them, he put something ridiculous that I don't know if it really happens or not. That Anshen in them cover their dogs, their animals, with sakim and not let their animals to eat. If you ask me if it really happened that they was so stupid to cover their animal and not give food to their animal, I don't know. I know that Yuna wants to describe something. That the tshuva of the people in there worth nothing. You know why it's worth nothing according to his opinion? Because this type of tshuva even an animal can do. What do you mean it's every animal can do? It's basically the survival instinct. It's based just on one thing. You put a gun next to your head and now what do you have to do? You need to do tshuva. So it's not really tshuva. It's not coming from decision. It's not coming from thinking. It's not coming from feeling. It's not coming from any type of process. That's you now wasn't able to accept it. And that's the reason why you now describe this tshuva as tshuva of the animals. Because honestly, this type of tshuva, even without brain, animals can do. And you know what? Maybe it's also explain what you now did in the beginning of the book. When he's going to sleep, when he tried to run away. You know, was so clever. He knew that the Baruch would not let him to sleep. He knew that the Baruch would not let him to run away and to escape. He come to the Baruch and say, if in your world you agree to have relationship with human beings as animals, if you agree to let people to do tshuva as a passive, as a chefza, if you're familiar with this terminology, and not as a gavra, that they don't need to think, they don't need to do, they don't need to, to act, they don't need to do anything. They can be like animals. I'm going to be a Navi like this. You want me to give the Nevoah? Take me. I'm going to be like an object. I'm going to be like a Hefza. I'm going to sleep and you need to carry me. If you agree to deal with this world, that people don't need to decide, that people don't need to be active, that people don't need to do things with knowledge, with thinking, with feeling, it's your business. So I want to be Navi like this. I'm going to try to escape. I know that you're going to carry me. And see how much it's ridiculous. This is the world that you want, Akadosh Baruch Such a ridiculous world. 
And you're not going to sleep by purpose because you want the Kalash Bokhu to take him like an object. He don't want to go with his decision. He don't know to want to go with his emotions, feeling, thinking. He wants to show a Kalash Bokhu that we came to be ridiculous all this show. No one thinking, no one behavior like a human being, everyone behavior like a chevta, like animal. Also me. It's so interesting, even when the, the dog, the Leviathan, sending Yuna to the Nevoa, what's the Pasuk said? That the Leviathan, a key hit Yuna. You know what is a key throw out? It's also not a rational reaction. It's something that person not decided to do. It's like, you know, say to Akatosh Baruch you know what? It's your business. You want a world that play like this? That human beings not need to be human beings? They can be like a hefta, they can be like animals? I will be navi like this. You will be with Ninva like this. And all this story is a story of not a purple, it's a story of animals. And that's how we describe it in the beginning of the book. But you know what is a punchline? Akatosh Baruch told him basically, it does fat it. Because you know what HaKadosh Baruch Hu answered him in the end of the book? HaKadosh Baruch Hu answered him, this is exactly the way that I behave with the world. The world have an open check. I love my creation. I give them what they ask. But I give them exactly what they ask. And the people in there getting the survival that they want. But in the end, for the future, forever, in the history, the people in the way will describe as what? As Shtemes Haribo Ish, Shelo Yodim Ben Yeminam Smolam U Be'emar Abba. When anyone need to describe the people in Inveh, how they describe them? Like animals. Most people remember about Inveh. The animals and the dumb people. They get what they want. HaKadosh Baruch told him, what do you want, Nina? I love my creation. But my creation decides what's going to be my response. You could do tshuva like Ninve, if it's a tshuva of animals, it's a tshuva of instinct of survival. And what you get by this tshuva is surviving. Nothing more than surviving. Something that also included to you as a human being, an animal in the same line, in the same category. That's what they get. They get what they want. They get what they ask. And there is a different like of t- type of tshuva. What is after of the morning of Yom Kippur? We're talking about Im Tashiv Mi Shabbat Raglecha Mim Tzoch Evtzecha We're talking about Shuvah that involved with Shabbat. What's unique about Shabbat? Shabbat is a day that we are devoted to our build our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We are close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. There is a different type of Shuvah. Shuvah that the conclusion is that Am Yisrael get in Shabbat in a full spiritual level that human being can get. This is what we read in the morning. And that's the answer of HaKadosh Baruch to Yonah. Yes, I want to give my creation everything that they want. But don't feel that it's silly, because in the end, there is a huge difference between these two types of tshuvot. Because people get what they ask. So if you feel that it's silly that the people in Yonah can do tshuva as animals, but in the end they stay like animals in the same line. And when the Navi concluded, he put the animals and the people in Inveh as equal. Well, that's what they get. So why do you care so much? If you do tshuva because you want to do tshuva, with decision, with the progress, with... Then you get the highest level that human being can get. To be such a close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You get the Shabbat in your world. You get the spiritual day in your world. Because this is a message of Yom HaKippurim. And maybe Chazal, when they gave us two aftarot, one in Shacharit, they're talking about Shuvah that involves with Shabbat, and one in Mincha, they're talking about the Shabbat, Shuvah and Fanchen in there, want to tell us this message. Yom Kippurim, it's like an open check. It's a day of the mercy of HaKadosh Baruch about His creation. You can get everything. Everything that you want. You just need really, from the depth of your heart, to ask. But you know what? One comments. One t'nai. You get just what you want. Not even 1% more. It's open check. Write what you want to write. But you never get more than this. And you can decide. If you want to be like Anshayn in Ve'ez Mincha, 
and asking HaKadosh Baruch Hu forgiveness as animal with survival instinct, but at least HaKadosh Baruch Hu don't kill me. I want something totally different, a different level, a different relationship, a different type of tshuva. It forces you to work hard, but to get much more, to get spiritual world. It's up to you. It's Yom Kippurim. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants to give you. And we beg in HaKadosh Baruch Hu that giving us sechel to know what to ask.